Hi everyone, I'm Tom Oldenburg, uh, Meteor and React Native Developer. I, first of all, I'd like to say uh, a big thank you to the organizer of this event, Alim, um, Adrian, Katie, and Christy, who couldn't be here. And also, uh, thanks for giving me an opportunity to talk to all you guys about something that I'm excited about. Um, I, a lot of people know me, I've, I've only been using Meteor for about three to four months, so I'm fairly new to it. Uh, but it is an amazing community, so I'm really grateful for that. Uh, today, I'm going to be sharing my experiences and talking about um, integrating React Native with Meteor. Um, one, I'm going to be talking about why I think that React Native is exciting. Um, and React Native, I'll explain later, is a way to build native mobile apps uh, with JavaScript. Um, I'll be looking at a regular Meteor app. Uh, that I built with Meteor and a React, uh, with the React package on the front end. And I'm going to compare that with the React Native that's integrated with the Meteor app and kind of showing you how easy it is to hook it all up. All right. So a little, OK, so reasons to be excited about Meteor and React Native. Um, one is it's, it's just better than what's out there. Like, um, it, it's, I, I mean, I know that the Meteor team has integrated Cordova as a kind of a mobile solution. Um, and at the time of them doing that, it makes perfect sense. Uh, but I feel that React Native has a, a lot to offer. It, instead of taking a web app and porting it uh, into a mobile app, you, are, you have access to the native UI components, native uh, modules that are in Swift and in, in Java. And it looks and feels like a native app without the pain of learning Swift or Java. Uh, so that is really cool. Also, even if you, even people that develop with Swift and Java have said that the developing experience with React Native is just so much more easier. Um, you're able to have live code pushes. You're able to have debugging tools. All the stuff that we're used to on the web that mobile developers don't have, you get with React Native. So you can use a debugger, you can console log stuff to check stuff. Uh, it just makes it so much easier. And three is, is, like I said, being able to use not just the U native UI components, but the native module. So you have access to the, the date pickers and, and you know, the, uh, your contacts and calendar, all those kind of things. And the community is bringing more of those modules into packages and libraries. So, it's, it's really a, a great way to develop. So before I go um, into the specifics of the app that I'm going to show you, a little background story to put in perspective. Um, if you haven't heard of them, Script Dead, this is a plug for Script Dead, is a volunteering organization committed to teaching underprivileged high school students coding. Um, and I've been teaching with them for the past couple months uh, with a group of students. And uh, so I... I wanted to get them really motivated about a particular lesson, which was on wireframing. So I pitched them an idea. I told them, come up with an idea for an app, a chat app, and we'll break you into groups. And whoever gets voted the best chat app, I'm going to personally build them a web version, an iOS version, and an Android version, since some of the students had you know, iPhones and some had Android devices. Um, so, you know, my intention was to really kind of like bring home the, uh, the exercise, and it worked. They were very excited about it, uh, especially since it was a contest. So in the end, one group won. Um, they wanted it to be called Candy Chat. And uh, the three requirements is that, well, the number one re requirement was that they had to have emojis. Emojis was like the most important thing for them. Um, I'm, you know, this is a big gap in age, so I'm, I'm not of that type, but I understand that. Um, and they want, of course, to have text chat, and they want to be able to upload photos and videos. So I just, you know, had like a basic interface for the app where they click on one of the icons and it allows them to send one or the other. Um, so within a week, because they, the class meets every week, so I promised them this app, um, and granted, I my job, my my the last contract job that I had was 
Meteor and React Native. So, I, you know, I have an unfair advantage. But I, and within a week, I was able to get it running. I was able to get um, the web app running with Meteor uh, and Android and iOS versions. And I'll, I'll talk more uh, about some of the challenges in that and particulars of that. Uh, but the students, they loved it. Um, particular the use of emojis and why I included the poop emoji hates me, but they loved it. Um, so, let's see. Now, in preparing for this talk, I realized that the Candy Chat app was a little overly complicated for a simple demonstration. So, I made a boilerplate. Let's see. Okay. Yeah. So this is a boilerplate chat app that, and also another reason for making a boilerplate app was there has been, it's, this is a very new technology, uh, React Native for Android was released like two months ago. There's been like, you know, recent contributions that have made the integration a lot easier. Uh, and so I, along with uh, Nick Brown, we, we came up with this chat example demo. And I'm just gonna, um, show you how it works basically. Um, I guess first I can, so the, the way to run it is you just open it in, in Xcode, so you like open iOS. Can you pull, uh, yeah, make it bigger. Yeah. Um, so I just open it like that. I already have it open in Xcode. And then in Xcode, you just hit play. Uh, and what that will do is that Xcode will bring up a simulator. Also make that bigger. It's big. So it's 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 building the app in Xcode, um, and then it will run the simulator. And you can also run it on your your iPhone. You just need an Apple iTunes developer account, and it hooks right in. It's a lot of fun. Uh, Okay, so um, this is the app. Basically, I, I can also show you how this compares to the web app, which is less styled and beautiful. But the web app is very simple. You have a login and you have a sign up. It's basically it's basically one um, it's one template with a React component that you, an on click event you change from the login form to the sign up form. And when you log in, log in. And, and so it just takes you to the, the other route, which is chat. And chat, um, I'll show you in a second, has a couple components to it. Uh, one is the form on the bottom, so that's a component called message form. The messages are is a thing called message box, a component, and that has individual messages. And then I have a header. Um, so to show you kind of the, the Meteor app first, uh, it, it should be, let's see if I can make this bigger, yeah. This should be pretty familiar for most Meteor developers. You have a collection, uh, messages is a collection, you have uh, a create method, and it's just inserting into the, into MongoDB. Uh, my router, I use Iron Router, and there's just, like I said, a home route, and there's a chat route, and it's just subscribing to those messages, so should be pretty straightforward so far. Um, and you know, it's, it's supposed to be a simple example. Um, now if I go to my, my templates, I'm using, this is where it gets a little interesting, so I'm using the official React package and also using React template helper package. And what that enables me to do, one, I can call upon in my template and say, hey, render this landing component. And if I go into my helpers, uh, this is a JSX file, it's referencing this landing component here, and you can see that it's a React class. Um, React, another cool, just React in general is very cool because you can easily use ES6 and ES7 uh, stuff, so I'm using JavaScript classes, I'm using a, a constructor to set the initial state, and it just has a render function which, you know, renders a, it, to the DOM if it's a web app and uses a whole virtual DOM system. Um, so that's pretty straightforward. It's, and I'm going to show you this in React Native to show you how 
easy it is and how similar it is. Uh, basically, in my landing component, I have an if else where, I mean, if, if the state is set to login, I'm going to render this login component. And if it's set to register, I'm going to uh, render the register component. And those are just two forms. This class login is a login form, as you can see with the inputs form, and register is a register form. So very straightforward. Now I'll show you, let's see, if I can, so that's the same thing that's here, in the React Native, um, right? So I'm going to log in. And that should transition here. Now, let's see if this works. Uh, I from the iOS app. Yeah, cool. So you, you get the reactivity that you expect in Meteor. Just port it right over to React Native. And, and so let me let me now compare. So this I showed you is the, the landing component for the Meteor app. If we look into React Native, this is my React Native app, and I go into App Components Sign Up, it's basically the same thing. So, um, same thing, I'm just creating a React, React class. Um, here I have register and login as variables, and when register is set to true, I'm rendering the register component and login's true, the same thing. And aside from some UI stuff, like I have a, obviously with the if I log out, I have um, let's see. yeah, I have this nav bar on the top. So that's the, the difference there. Like I'm using a different routing system, of course, but as far as the UI, it should be very similar. Um, rendering a login, and yeah, that's this, and this is this. So the, the cool thing about React Native is that like in HTML, we use divs, we use p-tags, we use all these kind of things. In React Native, we're not trying to copy that. We actually use the native components. So you have, you know, like in iOS would be the UI view, you use a view component, you use a text component, touchable highlight is like a button component. Um, and so like the kind of methodology in React is not um, write once and run everywhere, it's learn once and write anywhere. So we're like, as you can see, like with the um, the action sheet iOS that popped up on the bottom there, that's I'm using the specific iOS functionality there. Um, and if I show the chat, uh, let's see. So chat JS. Chat. Uh, so yeah, here I have a chat. Component. This is a chat component, and there's going to be some different things, but um, render. So, like in this one, I have a div, I have a header, a div, a message box, and a message form. Here, I have a view, I have a nav bar instead of a header. I have another view with a message box, and then this is my form. Um, so, like a lot of the same behavior you're able to use. I mean, it, if you if you make the web app with a React front end, it's very easy to port it to, um, to the React Native side. And I also did this for Android as well. I was going to show you an example, but we confirmed that there are some issues in the, uh, the, the generally used Android simulator, Jenny Motion. So I didn't even show you those, but uh, it, it works equally as well with Android. Um, now I just want to talk more about how to integrate it. Yeah. So like some of the, like this ease of integrating React Native and Meteor is, is very recent. Um, I worked for a company two months ago and I think we were the first in New York City to bridge the two together that I'm aware of. Um, and, and the way that we did it was kind of in a, a hackish way, I would say. And since then, there have been uh, contributions in the community to make it easier. So this, I just want to like, give credit where credit is due. Um, in April, uh, Harrison Harness, he also gave a dev shop talk on 
gluing together React Native with Meteor. His original blog post was using Objective-C code because React Native for iOS didn't have a bridge module for WebSockets. Um, that soon came. Uh, and this is what I used that, uh, previously. But this, so once the WebSocket module was released, we could use packages like no DDP client and put DDP into the React Native app. Um, however, it w I still feel like this was a really hackish way because if you look what's going on, you're establishing a DDP client, you're initializing it, you're connecting to your server, and you're subscribing to something, but then the way that you're changing your data is an on message event, which is just a generic, what, whenever there's some change in the DDP client, it sends a message. And so you have to filter through those messages and, oh, is this message have a type of messages? Okay, then I'm gonna filter that and add that to my data store. So like I said, it's like, it works, but not an ideal solution. Um, better examples. This September, uh, Spencer Carley, uh, he released a uh, repository on the Meteor To Do's app. And this, I feel like this is the best solution out there right now. Um, because you're using the DDP client as a node package, there is some configuration that you have to do to get the reactivity, but he handles this. He has a separate module-based way of initializing the DDP, making it reactive. Uh, and this is the verbatim kind of way that I handled it in the, the uh, boilerplate app. Uh, so I think this is a, a way better uh, way of doing it. And also, uh, October 7th, like about a month ago, or a month and a half ago, the Android WebSocket module was released. So there's a lot of changes um, that are making this possible. Now, for my Candy Chat app, I actually started with Android. Uh, because I had been working you know, professionally doing iOS, but we were kind of putting off the Android development, and so I wanted to get my feet wet and try it out. I will say that there are some caveats to it. Um, this is what I've noticed. It, I, if I were to do it again, I would develop for iOS first, and then port over the code to Android, because the development process in Android is a little slower. Um, iOS has been around, the React Native pack, you know, for iOS has been around a lot longer. A lot of the bugs have been fixed. In the Android, you can have kind of like some glitchy scene transitions and stuff like that. It's a little harder to debug. Uh, also, it doesn't have support for Webpack yet, which can also make the development process easier. Um, I hope you're ready to use React Native and, and Meteor. Um, another, another thing that I was going to say, why I think this is so important, why I think this will play a big part in media in the future um, is because for small companies and startups and like mobile is huge as we all know and creating a, a native look and feel in your mobile app is, is incredibly important uh, and, and React Native meets this need. It also is, is open for iOS and Android now which is very recent and the community is really making it more stable but I think uh, it's going to really take off and it it really enables people to get their product out a lot faster and better quality. So um, we do have a React Native NYC meetup. Nick Brown uh, is one of the organizers as well as myself. And we just uh, scheduled our first meetup on December 16th at Priceline. So you guys are welcome to check us out. This is the, the chat demo repo that um, I was taking you guys through. So it's a really easy way to get started in integrating that. Um, Spencer Carley, that, that is the to do's app that's really great. And feel free to follow me on GitHub and Twitter or email me if you'd like to contact me. So, thank you. I got a question. Okay. So, uh, you said Nick helped you out with this. Yeah. Did you guys uh, know each other um, for a long time? How that? So, we met at a Meteor event. Actually, the hackathon, I think. Yeah. And, and Nick has also used Meteor and React. Or why, why don't you explain, Nick? Uh, <laughs> how we better? Just in general. So we. So whichever is more interesting. He, he liked Meteor React. I like Meteor React. So we hit it off, and we're currently working on a React Native project together. So like one of the great things is that if 
you're already familiar with React, picking up React Native is super simple. The only difference is you're not making lots of custom components. You're just you're calling the components just the native wrappers, and that, that's a super easy transition. The other thing I like is that I was using a Cordova and Ionic before, and it's just the animations are just never quite what you want them to be, and there's like lots of like hacking at the performance rate that never <coughs> makes it. The, when you use React Native, you get to use the native animation APIs and stuff, so like everything just feels smooth and doesn't get laggy. So what's what's interesting though is that you guys met at Meteor Meetup. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to say <laughs> we have this meetup this thing. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Hey, Jan. Uh, so, um, what percentage of code would you think that you're able to reuse between React, uh, Meteor app, the iOS, and Android? Yeah, that's so a, if you could repeat the question. Sure, that's a really important question. So the question was how how much code is reusable between iOS and Android? Um, and the answer it can it can range really. So there are specific UI and, and modules that you can use for each platform for Android or iOS. Uh, Facebook uh, built their ads manager app as well as their groups uh, mobile app in React Native. And their blog post uh, says that they have about 85% reusability. Um, because you do want to use, like, you know, you want to learn once and write everywhere. So you, you do want to reuse some stuff, but you also want to use specific stuff to really, you know, leverage that. Um, in, in my case, I, as you see from the, if you check out the, the demo, there are some specific Android files, just two of them. But it, I'd say it's like 98% and in this boilerplate app. Yes. Um, so I guess I'll preface saying I'm just starting to get into Meteor myself. I haven't really touched React at all. Heard it a hundred times by now. Yeah. Um, so I have a small dev team, do Rails. We're trying to build some mobile apps. None of us has mobile experience. And we're trying to figure out, okay, what's the best way we keep hearing you know, Rails API to React Native front end or and I'm kind of pushing, okay, let's just learn Meteor. So I guess coming from that perspective, I'm not really sure which one were you arguing more towards, using Meteor with React kind of add-on or just using React native on its own? Because it seemed like it was more reusable to just use a Meteor app with the React so side of it. It depends on like the, the needs. Okay, so the question is yeah, you're a real shop, you're looking into mobile, is it good to use Meteor? Is it good to use Rails? Like what is the trade-offs? I would say like so Meteor and React Native. I, I think is a, is great because of the reactivity, um, and you don't have to manually configure sockets and all that kind of stuff. If you don't, if it's mostly not stuff that you need, like a chat app has to be reactive. Like you need like that instant updating. If you don't need that as much, you can also use React Native and just do kind of like AJAX kind of calls to your backend and up. That's so what the official React Native example does. That it it interacts like with a normal API call. So I guess it depends on the specifics of the company. Okay. Cool. Yes. So what's your first step here when you got you build your your meteor app and then you go okay I want to make a mobile on my you I, I did it with React um, on the front end and yeah. then I want to make a mobile React native app uh, you know do I go uh, to Spencer Parley's um, and kind of follow follow that setup and I make a completely new repository? Um, yeah, I mean you could. I mean. All that you really need, if you have the, the web app, I mean, in the web app, could just be the, the back end, right? Like, if you're not a web-based company, you could just make a Meteor server, which is what we did at the pre previous place that I worked at. Um, but what I would say is that, yeah, look at the Spencer Carly app, um, look at this app, they're basically the same, and it's basically a module for DDP. And, and if you have that, you can call it anywhere in your React Native app and, and hook into the server. And so is that still, does that still count as a um, hack right now, or does that feel like, does this not feel like a hack anymore? So the, the one that I said was the hack was the one previous to that, where you had the on message event. Spencer Carly example has made a more elegant solution. Yeah, so I feel that it's, it's much more easier now. And so you spoke a little bit about the Reusability across Android and iOS. How about from your original app? Right. How much reusability is there there? 
So I, I was trying to kind of, so that the, the, I'll repeat the question is how much reusability between web and mobile as uh, compared to iOS and Android. So I was trying to compare before the structure, like the structure of the components, the JavaScript behavior that you're using is going to be the same. The UI elements that you use are different. That's about the only difference I see. And yeah. Is there, so then is there any, like, I guess for me I was like, when I saw you jump to a different repository, right? I was like, screaming out the drive driver, like, don't, like, like, it seems like there's going to be a lot of work to then, then update in a different place, in two different places, right? Like, you're going to, so you're, you're copying, there's just, it seems like there's going to be a lot of code copying, uh, or like, when, even though you're only learning it once, right? I, I would kind of wonder if maybe this is down the line somewhere where you can have that all in one repository and you can call a function that, that then says, okay, this is what I'm going to do for web, this is what I'm going to do for iOS, this is what I'm going to do for Android. Like, right. I don't know if maybe that's not possible for some reason, or, but, or maybe down the line we can go there. I think, yeah, so I, I think for iOS and Android, it, you can do that. You can reuse, I'm sharing components among both, but it's, it's not a solution where you build a mobile app and then the web app comes for free. Those are two separate things at this point. And you know, I'm sure that's you know people's wish list that they can do that, but not yet. Yes, Adrian. Is the uh, King China? Uh, I love emojis, especially the poop emoji. So is that <laughs> one available? Is it on GitHub somewhere where we can actually use it? Oh yeah, the the emojis or the, the candy chat. Candy chat. Yeah, you can <laughs> check out on on my GitHub. I have candy chat there. You can totally use that and fork it. <laughs> Maybe it will become big. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> then I'll have to pay royalties to the students. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. So, sorry. Just to go back to what you were saying before about the iOS and Android ones. So, can you like actually, you know, call the same view like JSX file for both the Android and the iOS version? You can. Okay. Um, it's up to you. So the routing starts at two different places. Right, you have an Android that Android that JS, and you have an iOS that JS, and each has an individual router. Now you can direct them to the same component, or you can split them off. It's up to you. And so I'm in a like my message component and my message box component. I'm sharing between the two, but my chat component I've split up because if you notice the iOS um, chat app has that action sheet that pops up at the bottom. Android doesn't have that, so I can't share the same file in that case. That's why the 85% to 95% reusability. <coughs> yes, Adrian. Where do we go to learn about those React Native specific things, like view, those components? Like as a web developer, I have no idea what iOS or Swift or Android you know, has. Right. Is that React Native package tells us that in the documentation somewhere? Um, I would just uh, go to the React Native docs and they're very good. They have a tutorial to get started, and, and they have a list of all the UI components, but also the UI, the um, the modules, such so like the camera and you know the camera roll and all that kind of stuff. Yep. Any more questions? Yes. Do you still retain some of the hot push functionality? No. So can you bypass uh, iOS uh, App Store approval? Oh yeah. <laughs> hot code I wish. So <laughs> I, I I'm still. Yeah. Repeat the question. I, yeah. So the question is like, just how you can hot code push your in development? Can you hot code push to deployment yeah. on the App Store? And I think anyone who's tried to develop uh, an app in the App Store can knows the pain, and the pain is the same. Like, yeah, I I, I think it's it's a lot faster to build the app than to actually get it accepted by the App Store. But <laughs> I'm working on my first submission, so I think like after you do it a few times, it becomes simpler. Uh, just to respond to that one, actually you can hotcode push. Yeah, so you have to get it in the app store the first time. But as long as you don't update the okay. build, so you don't recompile the app, and you don't like, add any objectives to it, then you can update the JavaScript. Cool. So, Thank you. Can you repeat it for them? Yeah, so <laughs> we have confirmation. So you said once you have a build that's passed? Yeah, once you've submitted the first right. build, the JavaScript can update. Cool. Or it can be updated uh, remotely. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yes, yeah, so once you have a build in the app store that's passed, you can automatically update to that on your successive builds. Yeah, you need to set that up ahead of time. Though. Yeah. Like you need like, <laughs> a, like 
an app that can receive new JavaScript code. And there's services that do that. Cool. All right. Thank you. Thank you.